Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. We'll guide you through the biggest headlines of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number five. We've got a lot of discussions this week. We'll see what happens. Now that House Republicans have filled the speaker vacancy, some say it's time to create another job opening. Let's rid George Santos of, uh, of the House. Five vulnerable New York Republicans sent a letter to their colleagues Wednesday urging them to vote yes on H.R. 773, a resolution that would expel first-term Congressman George Santos for being unfit to service. He lied about everything, his education, his faith, the fact that his mother uh, was a victim of 9-11, of uh, the fact that his grandparents were victims of the Holocaust. I stand today to continue to prove my innocence of these allegations and charges leveled against me. Santos has pleaded not guilty to 23 federal charges, including wire fraud and identity theft. Last week, a judge set a trial date for September 2024. Santos also faces a House Ethics Committee investigation. The committee said Tuesday it's contacted approximately 40 witnesses, reviewed more than 170,000 pages of documents, authorized 37 subpoenas, and will announce a next course of action by November 17th. So why would Congress act now? I called for George Santos's expulsion at the very beginning of the year, and, you know, I'm a man of my word. Santos posted on social media he will not beg for his constitutional rights. The effort failed to get the two-thirds majority vote needed to expel Santos. For now, his job intact, even if his reputation is not. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. You can stream the Advocate channel now. Download our Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, or Google Play Store app for instant access. The countdown continues with number four. It's a potentially deadly disease. Lung cancer kills more people in the U.S. than colon, breast, and prostate cancers combined. But early detection can save lives. Only about 5% of those that are eligible for lung cancer screening actually are being screened. Previously, the recommendation was for anyone between the ages of 50 to 80 with at least a 20-pack per year smoking history who currently smoke cigarettes or quit within the past 15 years to be screened annually for lung cancer. But the American Cancer Society is now advising doctors to remove that time-since-quit criteria. What we found was that it, while there was initially sort of a decrease or leveling of, of, of risk of lung cancer, as a patient ages, the risk of lung cancer increases significantly. Dr. William Dayhut says this update will make it easier to know who should be screened for lung cancer. People don't have to sort of calculate when someone quits smoking. And, and by, by changing our guidelines, we're actually going to increase the number of eligible patients by about 37%. And which means by about 5 million more Americans will now be eligible for lung cancer screening. The screening is a quick low-dose CT scan of the chest, since coverage is largely driven by screening recommendations from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, and that agency has not currently adopted this update. Insurance may or may not cover lung cancer screenings based on this updated ACS guideline, but Dayhut hopes that will change. We're hopeful that once our guidelines are in place, people will look at the value of that. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. This year's Thanksgiving dinner is serving up some dramatic shifts when it comes to cost. Wholesale prices for turkey fell 29% in October compared to a year ago. That's according to Wells Fargo's new Thanksgiving report. The forecast is welcome news for turkey farmers and marks a major shift from last year when a wave of avian flu took out birds, leaving some farms struggling to keep up with demand, which led to higher store prices. This 2023, the Wells Fargo Agri-Food Institute says farms added 2% to 3% additional birds and that robust supply plus a drop in the cost of refrigerated trucks to move supply from farm to store are contributing to the price drop but get ready for some sticker shock because the rest of the meal will cost you more everything else around it all those side dishes choose to spend wisely and shop wisely where you can according to the wells fargo forecast canned cranberries cost almost 60 percent more compared to the same time last year so opt for fresh cranberries instead which cost about 20 percent less compared to last year and right now production costs for canned pumpkin are 30 percent higher this year from last year russet potato prices are at an all-time high with prices up 14 percent from a year ago so consider going 
going for sweet potatoes instead. Store prices are only up about 4%. To trim costs, experts recommend scaling back. Do you really need all that stuff? Who is actually eating this? Do we have a dish that maybe only gets two or three bites? Scrap it. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Cornell University cancels its classes for Friday following the arrest of 21-year-old junior Patrick Day. He's accused of allegedly posting online messages that included calling for the death of Jewish people and threatening to shoot up a kosher dining hall on campus. I mean, I've seen general anti-Semitic sentiment and things like that, but to have not only a direct threat, but a direct threat to a building that I personally go to and eat at and see friends at, like, that was really scary. The Anti-Defamation League says anti-Semitic threats increased close to 400 percent shortly after October 7th, when a Hamas attack on Israel resulted in 1,400 deaths, most of whom were civilians. We are focusing our efforts on confronting and disrupting illegal threats wherever they arise. While the Carter Center issued a statement calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, including a 2002 line from the namesake former president that said, quote, we will not learn to live together in peace by killing each other's children. The Biden White House is drawing some pushback for its support of Israel as the death toll in Gaza has passed 8,700, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Our message is very clear. No ceasefire, no vote in 2024. Mr. Biden has pursued a policy of death. I'm John Lawrence reporting. We are approaching four weeks since Hamas's deadly October 7th terrorist attack on Israel when more than 1,400 mostly Israeli individuals were killed, most of them civilians, but hundreds, hundreds of bodies remain unidentified. I recently spoke with Dr. Chen Kugel, who is the director of Israel's National Institute of Forensic Medicine, who explained why it's been so difficult to identify these remaining bodies, a, a warning now I'm going to show you some images that are graphic and disturbing. We're showing them to you because they explain something about the abject cruelty of what Hamas terrorists did to civilians on October 7th, and also because it shows how difficult this process has been for families who want answers about what happened to their lost loved ones. Again, a warning of what I'm about to show you. So Dr. Kugel says, what looks to be a piece of burnt wood or, or coal here is actually flesh. And upon further examination with imaging, it reveals two sets of rib cages. Uh, one of them is smaller uh, with a wire tying them together. In the conclusion of Dr. Kugel and his team, these are the burned bodies of an adult and a child tied together, maybe embracing. Opening a body bag, Dr. Kugel and his team found these charred remains. You'll, you'll notice that these remains are white. Kugel told me that that means the temperature was above 700 degrees centigrade, which Dr. Kugel says likely means the terrorists used some sort of chemical accelerant uh, to get that high a temperature. Ultimately, his team concluded these were actually the remains of two different people though there was no DNA to trace, no DNA was left because of the high temperatures, so their identities will never be known. From a different body bag, a CAT scan revealed that there were bones in here, three left legs and two right legs in the bag. So that meant, Dr. Kugel and his team concluded, three different people in this same body bag, and these five bones were the only traces left of these three people. Maybe in other bags there were other pieces of these people, Dr. Kugel told me. These are very difficult cases to deal with, and I'm about to show you an even more upsetting example. This is a blurred picture from the National Center of Forensic Medicine, and even blurred it's disturbing. This is the burned body of an adolescent girl and her head has been mostly separated from her body. Now, the forensic experts say they don't know if the separation happened before or after the girl was killed. Still, this happened. And this is the level of cruelty that we are talking about here. 